Hello, my name is Ranu. In this video, I will tell you how you can extend your house using permitted development rules in England. What is permitted development? These are a set of rules fixed by the government that allow you to increase, extend and alter your house without the need to apply for a formal planning permission to your local council. So that's one less pain in the neck for your uh, renovation project. But listen to the experienced professionals when they ask you to get permission uh, or prior approval or obtain a lawful development certificate for your extension before you start construction. Even if you think that your uh, extension lies under the permitted development rules. Why? This will reduce your headache while selling your house because you will have all the correct papers to hand. It will remove any anxious dealings, communications with your local council in case one of your neighbor, alert neighbors, complain about your extension to them. And uh, most of all, it will keep you above board and legal at all times. I will abbreviate permitted development to PD in this uh, talk so that I fumble a little less than usual. And in this talk, I'm going to cover how you can add a dormer on the roof or the loft or the attic of your detached and semi-detached house under PD rules. What are semi-detached houses? Uh, these houses share their uh, one wall with the next house. So if we look at the house here in the photograph, this is the wall of the house on the right. And this house on the right is sharing its one side wall with another house. And on the other side, it is not sharing its wall with any other house. So it is semi-detached. Uh, what are detached houses? Uh, detached houses are uh, the houses that stand alone. They are untouched by any neighboring uh, walls. So it's like a no strings attached relationship that you can see on the bottom right of your screen here. Now that you're sure of what type of uh, house your property is, there are some other conditions attached to your house that you need to be clear about. Please check that your house is not a part of any of these conditions that have just bounced on your screen. Your house should not be a listed building. It should not lie on Article 2 land, that is the areas of outstanding natural beauty, conservation zones and other protected habitat. Your house should not have an Article 4 direction implemented on it because that will restrict or limit any extensions under PD rules. Your house should not have been converted from a previous use. And also, uh, it should not be a new dwelling. And most of all, it should be a house, which means it should not be a flat or a masonite. How can you find out if any of this applies to your house? Check your property deed papers do an online search with your postcode in it, or ask your appointed architect or designer. We are covering uh, semi-detached and detached houses uh, for dormer loft extensions. Uh, check all the three headings in the orange semicircle at the top of your screen before you listen to me further. We always recommend that you apply for uh, prior approval or a lawful development certificate, which has been abbreviated to LDC on your screen here. To start with, dormers are not permitted development on a principal elevation. That means the front face of your house that faces a road, a street or a highway. And if you want this, you need to uh, put a formal planning application with your local council. So what you can do is at the rear, uh, let's look at this example. This is your original house. At the rear of your house, you can insert a dormer at the roof level under PD rules, but at the front, you cannot do that. And for that, you will require a planning permission. And I dare say I've never seen uh, them give permission for such a thing even then. Now, the volume of your loft extensions. The cubic content or the volume, uh, we usually refer to this as area uh, when it's in two dimension, but here they are worried about the height, etc. also. So the cubic content or the volume of your resulting 
uh, roof space, your new roof space, or your additional roof space. It is referred to by a lot of names. So this new roof space should be less than 50 cubic meters. And uh, how does is how is this brought about? I'm going to explain you with these uh, quick sketches here. Usually we start with a hipped roof for a semi-detached or a detached house, a hipped roof. What is that? It is sloping on all three sides. So this is the front, this is the side, and this is the rear, okay? This is a hipped roof. For a dormer extension, usually you pull out your hipped roof to make it into a gable end, a gable end here. So this flat portion of the roof that you see, which is resulted, is uh, the gable end. It is not sloping anymore. And you have added this uh, uh, area or volume in this blue rectangle that you see. And finally, the last step is to insert a dormer onto this new roof that you have just extended. And this dormer is facing your rear guard. So what you need to do is for permitted development purposes, you need to tell them the whole volume of this new roof, basic roof that you added and this new uh, dormer, flat roof dormer or a pitch roof dormer that you have added further to it. How can you calculate this uh, volume? Uh, your architect or designer will do this for you and inform you. Or uh, you can uh, go to a planning uh, portal volume calculator link that I've given you on the screen. And you will also find it in the description box below the video. And just to align you better, this is these are uh, sketches of how in reality your dormer or a standard roof would look. Again, the sides are sloping, front and back is sloping. It's called a hip roof. And then you make it a gable end a flat side here of your roof, and you insert a dormer, which overlooks your rear guard. But be careful of how you calculate the volume. Uh, you could look at this uh, planning portal link for that. Now, the roofs. The maximum ridge, the ridge is the highest point of a sloping roof, or even for a flat roof, you'll have a highest point. So the maximum ridge height of your dormer extension should be no higher than the existing roof ridge of your house. Let's look at a quick sketch. The blue box is your existing uh, house. This uh, tip here is the highest point of your sloping roof. So this is the ridge. This gray area here is the dormer that you want to add on your roof. So the ridge of your extension should be lower than the ridge of your existing house. Uh, let's talk about eaves now. Let me just clear this. Eaves. The dormer eaves, that's the lowest point of your sloping roof. So uh, if the blue box is your original house, this point here, the tip is the lowest point of your sloping roof. And you and this gray box is your dormer that you would like to insert. So the distance between the two points should be 20 centimeters or 0.2 meters or 200 millimeters. And this measurement should be taken parallel to the roof slope like you as can see this black arrow this is how you, that measurement should be uh, determined windows any upper floor window located in a side elevation must be obscure glazed which means you can't use clear glass it should be frosted so look at this pink sketch here so this pink shaded area let's assume is the uh, side elevation of your dormer uh, this window that you want to insert should have uh, no clear glass in it and it should be fixed from 1.7 meters of your first floor level. This, uh, the top of this window should be fixed. Above that 1.7 meters, this window could be openable like, you know, a small ventilator, but the whole glass has to be obscure. Uh, why? This is to avoid uh, peeping tom behavior of the homeowner uh, and maintain a neighborly love with your immediate next door neighbors so that they do not feel that you're, you are invading their privacy. The other thing which I just told you that you cannot add a dormer to the front roof or the front face of your house, but you can add roof lights. Uh, and the stipulation for these roof lights is that these roof lights will come under permitted development uh, as long as they don't protrude or rise up more than 15 centimeters or 0.15 meters or 150 millimeters beyond the surface of your original roof. So you can see here, this is this blue uh, triangle is your original uh, roof surface. And from that, this is your roof light. It will include the frame of your roof light, the, the outside glass of your roof light. So if you measure it perpendicular to the roof slope, it should be no more than 0.15 meters or 15 centimeters. Uh, the same applies 
to your uh, roof lights that you can insert in your back uh, roof, existing roof, or your new extension dormer roofs. The same rule of 15 centimeters protrusion will apply. Anything more than that will not be a part of PD. No balconies should be protruding, extending forward from the new or the old external walls. But, oh, so this cannot happen. It's beautiful, gorgeous, but we cannot do this under PD rules. But Juliet balconies uh, can be installed to encourage your romantic side. And remember, the materials used on the external walls of your proposed extension should be similar to the ones that have been used on your existing current house. In a slight deviation to this material rule, you can install solar panels on your roof and these should not be visible from the front, uh, the road, the street or the highway in front of your house. So this was all you can extend on the roof or the loft level or the attic level of your detached or semi-detached house. And this house should not be a part of the list that I showed you uh, much earlier in the slideshow. Keep all of these points in mind and for more detail, go to the planning portal website, the link for which is available in the description box below the video and go there and have a thorough look or ask your appointed architect or designer who will have a very good idea already of how you can extend and improve your home. In my other videos, I have covered other types of properties that you can extend on the rear, on the side, uh, in your loft or the roof level under PD rules. If you have a specific question or you need more clarification, drop me an email on the email address given in the description box below this video. If you are ambitious and want to add more to what I have just told you or what is allowed under PD rules, you can still do it through the process of applying for a formal planning permission from your local council. And uh, I hope you would uh, take the assistance of an architect or a designer in this process. Till I see you again, if you do not have a designer working with you, then let your imagination run wild so the council can tame it for you.